I played in a band for a few years and I had a secret weapon uh, that a former band that I was in, the guitar player had, which is the Maestro Bass Brass Master. So we, you know, we do a lot of just kind of uh, gags uh, uh, to, to, to each other. And so I stole that pedal. My dad and I uh, reverse engineered it and I made two uh, in like a BB enclosure, put a pink triangle on it and said, it's the Barker Ass Master and thought it was really funny. And Paul looked at me and said, we should make these for other people. Uh, I mean, I never, never was even a consideration. It was such an afterthought. And I was like, okay, let's, let's do that. Analog Man was a vintage guitar dealer and I, I've always liked pedals. I started getting into pedals, and then it started getting harder to find the vintage pedals, and I had been fixing them, so I decided I could, I could build the same thing, so I started, started building copies of some vintage pedals. And I think I started off modifying the Tube Screamers because I traveled to Japan, and I was able to find the chips over there that were in the TS-808s, whereas this was even before the TS-9 was reissued. The TS-9 originals often had uh, a different chip, so I would put the old 808 chip in them. And then the first pedal we actually made uh, to sell was our Analog Man Chorus, which was based on the Electroharmonics Small Clone. And Electroharmonics at that time was not making any pedals. So we started building those for the Kurt Cobain fans. And um, that was our first pedal. We used to call it the Clone Clone. And people would send me their tube screamers for mods or they'd uh, you know, order my, my chorus pedal. I had a broken DoD 250 overdrive that I really liked, and I bought a replacement for it. Didn't sound like the old one, so I was like, I'll fix this myself. Looked up the schematic, found it on General Guitar Gadgets. It worked, got excited, built myself a clone of it, and then pretty much got obsessed from that point. So I started just building myself like fuzz faces and DoD 250 overdrives with like modded clipping options, and then I built some for friends. It was pretty much the start. It was the first time that Earthquaker appeared on a pedal. Well, we didn't really know we were starting a business. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was pretty well a business before we were like, oh my God, we have a business. This is how it started. An Avery label maker, a green JHS mods. <laughs> you could tell I was really like going, I, I didn't know it'd go past modding some things. This is the second Morning Glory ever made. One day I'm walking through like a craft store something like that with my wife. And I passed this aisle. It's like one of these teacher aisles with these rubber stamps. And I had this design, and it was the pulp and fill compressor based on the old orange squeeze, Dan Armstrong. And I saw this stamp. I had a set of typewriter stamps. I had different icons. I would begin to name pedals based off the aisle at a craft store. And then I met a guy who moved in right next to me. He was a graphic designer, and he was like, you know, we can just make custom stamps. And I was like, what? You can make custom stamps? I graduated with an MBA in international business from the University of South Carolina in 2009. Session is there, nobody's hiring, and I have just spent, you know, $60,000 on a degree that I'm like, what am I going to do with this? I wanted the stunkware so that when I would go into a product design or development firm or brand research firm, I could just drop it on the desk and say, hey, I know how to do this. Now rescue me from having to do more of this. So the first pedal was basically uh, our variation on what I wished a Proco rat would do. I'd always played with Proco rats and things. And so there was a guy on the internet I'd found um, named Philip Ruetz, who did a mod uh, that people would incorporate into it. And I just emailed him out of the blue and said, hey man, incorporate your mod and what can I pay you for your mod? I was the first builder to ever contact him and ask permission. And so he said, pay me nothing, just give me credit. The whole thing with Daredevil started completely out of necessity, right? Like I'm in a band, I'm touring, we're playing you know, over 100 shows a year. I wanted a pedal, and I couldn't find it. And I hit up some people and I was trying to you know, figure it out. And a, a guy that built pedals was like, hey man, you, know, you should mess around with this stuff. And you, you seem like a smart guy, you can maybe build something or get a kit and just start like tinkering with the idea of making your own thing. I grabbed a wah pedal and just started gutting it out and making this like kind of Frankenstein version of, you know, what went on to be the, uh, the atomic cock pedal, which is still like, you know, top seller. And I think there's been like five versions of it now. Like the whole first six months I was building stuff, like I'd build it like, all right, 
let's see if this actually does something, right? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but when you plug it in, it does. That was like the big hook. So it's like, well, if I can do this, and then I can make this other thing and do that, and then that works too, and then it just totally turned into like obsession, you know? The, the first pedal was, was kind of copying a schematic. The project, the Ross compressor that, that I took and looked at was, was kind of simple to, you know, put together and, and, and source the parts. You know, that, that process was, was, was fun and I had to learn a lot of stuff or figure out how to do it to, to make it look good enough to, you know, sell and ship to somebody. I had spent the prior 20 years um, at Analog Devices, the massive mixed signal semiconductor company. Analog Devices also was the pioneer of accelerometer chips. So we got the idea of uh, using the audio chip to do some kind of modulation, so filtering was the one that we picked. We utilized this small, lightweight, motion-sensing accelerometer chip as a means of controlling the guitar effect. So really, uh, it was a matter of using semiconductor technology to create a new expression controller. And that was the very first Source Audio product that uh, we came out with. We had previously both worked at uh, some other companies. I started at Keeley and uh, worked at Walrus, and uh, Seth worked at Mammoth, and then also helped me with a lot of stuff at Walrus. And so in 2014, we wanted to try and start our own thing. Like my job all through college was working at a screen printing shop. Brady came up with a pedal, fuzz pedal concept way back in the day, like when we were still in college. And um, I was like, I want to figure out if I can screen print on pedals. Several years later, kind of came back around to that and was like, what skill sets do we have? What hats, what are all the hats you and I can wear? All of that came from what we'd learned previously and previous experiences and really having to kind of hustle and make things work on very small to no budgets, you know. I was playing in, in a band called Caval with a couple of my friends and I looked down at their pedal boards. My guitar player says, you could actually just build this yourself. Well, what do you mean? All these unpainted boxes are from build your own clone and general guitar gadgets. Like your dad knows how to solder, like he could just teach you to do it. Okay. So my dad teaches me how to solder and it's an immediate black hole. I loved every second of it. I literally built the first thing I ever made with my dad across from me and I was rocking my son in a well-ventilated room. I contacted every band dude that I had toured with, played with, and was just like, I'm making pedals, like what can I make you? And Shannon was finishing up school for fine arts painting. So I had her paint the first pedal and we just kind of rolled forward from there. We developed uh, several products under the Damage Control brand name. Uh, they were all tube uh, products. And then we branched into a hybrid tube and digital products. In fact, the timeline originally was a damage control product. So the first pedal is the OB-1, which was an analog compressor. And then we came out with a series of digital pedals, the Brigadier, the Ola, and the Orbit. What, what people probably don't see is that, you know, we had kind of a, a two-year incubation period to basically get a lot of the stuff, the sort of core technology ready to go. So we kind of went boom, 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 just kind of fired off a whole bunch of pedals because we had that big time to, uh, you know, sort of develop all this um, core technology. We came together uh, as a small, like, three-piece team because we wanted to build this one specific uh, guitar effect. Well, actually, it's not really a guitar effect, it's just an audio processing device, uh, which ended up being the world-famous PLUS pedal. No, I'm joking. So it ended up being the, the PLUS pedal sustain device. And the idea was that we will finish it in like two, three months, and then we'll see what, it, what it's like, but we actually had to put in something like a year and a half into it. Pretty soon I realized that there's no way back. <laughs> so. Yeah.